So, we're going to move on to the Q&A with Matt's. Um, we have a ridiculous number of books. Thank you to the publishers. So we have The Rails Way, Ruby in Practice, Refactoring in Ruby, which I hadn't heard of, which is cool. Design Patterns in Ruby, Refactoring Ruby Edition, Ruby in Practice, Distributed Programming with Ruby, and David Allen Black's Well-Grounded Rubyist, all up here. Normally, we would do some sort of a random drawing, but we have so many books that that would take the rest of the morning. So instead of doing that, what we're going to do is give each person who asks a question the book of their choice. Yeah? Um, I think we can let people come up. We were, we were trying to decide logistically, should we walk around or should we let you come up? And really, if you're going to get a book, you should have to walk at least, right? <laughs> so... So please welcome uh, Mats. So do you want to have people queue up over here? Or do you want to run down the aisles? Or do you want people to queue up over here? Just wait for the other thing. Okay. So if anyone has a question, come on up here. And we'll hand you the mic. Oh, come on. Don't be shy. You get to ask him a question. There has to be something that someone wanted to ask. Get a book. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so um, so I saw the uh, Python uh, talk yesterday, and uh, I left with um, uh, Quarg's envy. So I'm wondering if if there's any plans to add like real <laughs> keyword argument support to Ruby. Uh, I I don't think. Yeah, I'm not sure what is real, but. I'm, we are planning about the keyword argument in, in Ruby 2.0. Okay. That was my question. Cool. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so what's the state of Ruby to Ruby on 1.9.1, or 1.9 Ruby? Mm -hmm. What's the state of? Yeah, is it, is it going away? Are we removing it? Uh, in, of what? Ruby 1.9. Ruby 1.9, okay. Uh, I, I'd like to introduce you, you Yui, who is the release manager, and she told me that she wanted to say something here. So, is this? Oh, there, there she is. As she's coming up, I'd like the line to swing all the way over there. here. <laughs> Rhythmically. Right up right here. Come on, stay, stay in the spot. <laughs> come here, come here. Come here, guys. No, I mean, stay in your, your queue order. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Yogoi. Uh, I'm I have managed release of Ruby 1.9. Uh, good question. Hi. I'm sorry. So. Uh, Ruby 187 had a great library called Ruby to Ruby, which gave access to the um, AST. And oh. apparently that library isn't being supported anymore in 19, and I was just wondering why that was. Yeah, it's, it's not supported just because you know, we removed the AST from the core, just because we did, we prepared the AST inside, then compiled into bytecode, then I s we throw away the AST. So we, we normally keep the AST inside, so. It's quite difficult to have a uh, Ruby in Ru Ruby to Ruby in that way, but you know we we are still yeah Ruby to Ruby is very uh, useful. So we are still planning something about uh, keeping source code somewhere or I don't know uh, translate the get the Ruby source code back from bytecode or something. So we we have vaguely planned about Ruby. Reviving that, but not no concrete plan yet. And uh, is it okay for you? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then uh, let let me uh, let her uh, explain about the Ruby one nine. Thank you. <laughs> I keep the speaker. Yeah. Uh, I'm forcing you not to talk. Don't. <laughs> 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 ごめんなさい。ちょっと話が。
<laughs> I'm sorry. What? Yeah. Yeah, I just screwed up then speaking in Japanese. <laughs> it's kind of difficult to switch the language. <laughs> oh. Ruby 1.9 is uh, gradu uh, gradually uh, accepted. Uh, Ruby 1.9.2 will be uh, the complete version of Ruby 1.9 series. Uh, Ruby so it will be stable. Oh. Ruby 1.9.1, 191, 191, 191, 191, 191, 191, 191, uh, as a result, uh, Ruby 1.9.2 will be not so different from 1.9.1, uh, at least uh, as a um, programming language. Uh, internally, uh, as, as Sasada-san uh, talked yesterday, uh, internally it changed more fast, uh, mm, more customizable, uh, more uh, less memory, and many improvements. But uh, but uh, on the level of Ruby code, <coughs> uh, Ruby one one nine two is just a better 191. Uh, this, uh, this shows uh, success of um, 191. Uh, I am 191 show, uh, show uh, defines uh, what 1.9 one, 1 series. Mm. And 192 will be um, will be the uh, will be complete. Uh, one uh, I will release uh, 192 after it passed. After, after it it will pass. Uh, Ruby spec. Do you know Ruby spec? Yeah. 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 It means uh, 192 is enough described uh, formally. Uh, so uh, it, uh, JRuby and Ruby News and Iron Ruby, Blue Ruby, uh, and so uh, can can be comp uh, can be compatible to Ruby 192. Uh, also, uh, I. I'm always uh, communicate with JRB, the JRB team and Ruby News team and Rails, Rails team. Rails. Uh, so when 192 and Rob, uh, Rails 3 are released, uh, they will be wo uh, work work together fine. Uh, Ruby 192 uh, will very usable and stable fast. Thank you. Yeah. Um, on two days ago, two you days mentioned ago. in your presentation about you had a slide that said MVM on it. MVM on Yes, mm -hmm. but you didn't really talk about it, and I guess maybe yesterday Koichi may have mentioned it, but I missed that one. Oh, too bad. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, was, I was pretty sad, but I was tired and went to sleep. So, yeah. Um, yeah, more tolls. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I guess for me, I, I don't know if anyone else missed it, um, really, what, is, what, what are we expecting with MVM, and, and how is it going to make us mm -hmm. be faster? <coughs> yeah, 
just because you know the, some part of the Ruby core, it will be virtual machines and some libraries are not less safe. So we just cannot, uh, we just need to put uh, the global lock inside of the virtual machine. But you know, the separating virtual machine, so making it object file and having multiple vi virtual machines in a, in a process, you can assign the virtual machine into the, the in independent uh, thread, native threads, so that we can run the virtual machines uh, stimulously. So, so we can utilize the multi-core on, on which is available in the research machines. So, so basically, it's kind of like a process in our end, but much heavier. And uh, so we, the virtual machines can communicate more efficiently than the communication between processes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so that we can utilize the multi-cores and uh, we can communicate with each other and, uh, so that we can utilize the <coughs> Yeah, the power of the machines, recent machines. And one last follow-up for that. When is that coming? Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is Maybe. a fair answer. Mm -hmm. uh, at least not for 192. All right, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, I attended the West uh, Middle East uh, talk and I left uh, the talk a little, um, I wouldn't say worry, but with you know, uh, deep questions about uh, uh, the Ruby main, uh, Ruby spec, and the MRI um, implementation, seeing like a bunch of resources thrown at other implementations uh, mm -hmm. for Ruby, and uh, seeing you know, a s very little core doing all of it. Um, so my question is like, do you have some of that worrisome about it? Uh, I is it wrong? No, I don't think it's not wrong. The diversity is very important for the language evolution as a whole. So as a community, we had to keep diversity, like having JRuby on J Java platform and have IonRuby on .NET. At the, at the same time, I well, a little bit about the lack of resource. Like we have very limited resource as a, as a in Ruby community, so the we ma we since we need to distribute the, our resource into JRuby people, JRuby and MRI and Rubinians and so much people. So just just sometimes we lack the the precious uh, human resource of of the people who can work on the inter Ruby internal. But you know, but still we. I think it's better to, to better not to restrict anything mm -hmm. to, to I keep diversity. Then I rather I open up the community and invite more people from outside of the community. Great. Thank you. So I think that next year at RubyConf we should have a class that maybe you should teach on Japanese for programmers. Uh -huh. So that we could learn how to say things like <coughs> You know, Ruby is both a functional and an object-oriented language. Uh -huh. <laughs> because I've met a bunch of people here this weekend who speak some Japanese, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to talk about programming stuff. Right, right. Yeah, probably Alan Patterson could do. <laughs> I think that would be uh, awesome. Ruby is object and object-oriented I was curious. What um, what in Ruby you would take out if you were redesigning it again? That's if there's anything in there that you wish you hadn't put in. Uh, yeah, I don't, everyone asked that question and it's quite <laughs> tough for me. But you know, yeah, I I have several answers. But okay, here's a new one. <laughs> one divided by two would be yeah one and a half yeah half. 0.5 or uh, right now, mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, no. to 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 what to uh, one half. Okay, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? One plus two equals not zero, but 0 0.5 or something. 
yeah, interdependent stacks. <laughs> Hi. Uh, during your keynote, you talked about how you want Ruby to be the perfect language for domain-specific languages. Mm -hmm. Yet when you look at real domain-specific languages that, for example, people were showing at this conference, mm -hmm. you can see that they had many problems with representing uh, mathematical expressions. So they had to use uh, either st like string constants, like one plus two in quotes, mm -hmm. or like symbols like colon GT and mm -hmm. something. And do you have any plans to make it easier to express math expressions in a more natural way, perhaps uh, similar to link or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, I'm not going to, to apart from the Ruby syntax. So in that in that case, that you you have the more syntax for expression, I, I encourage you to create uh, the external DSL, and uh, it, it is my mere wish for now. But I'd like to prepare some kind of the libraries to to encourage making the, the external DS, DSL as well, for like a, some kind of parsing library, adding some kind of parsing library in the standard distribution. Yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I would like to ask a uh, less technical question, but a more personal one, mm -hmm. uh, if you may. Uh, I, I, my blood type is old. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you th feel that the success of the L Ruby language uh, changed you? And if so, how? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it, it hasn't changed my internal. But it changed my external life, you know what I mean? That I was paid by making Ruby right now for the last 10 years. And uh, yeah, I can do, I can decide what to do each day by myself. So no one forced me to do anything. So, so I, changed, I changed my life a lot, but it doesn't, it hasn't, hasn't changed my personality, I hope. In other words, you're living a programmer's dream. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, really, I really love Ruby. The only thing that, uh, that gives me a little pain or, or a little bit of frustration is the adding things to the load path with the file expand path, file base, you know, dir, you know, under, underscore file. I mean, the, the, the length and the amount of stuff that has to be typed. And I know you've, you've added require relative to 1.9, which mm -hmm. helps. Um, but it, are you still open to us adding a underscore, underscore dir just to simplify some of that uh, syntax? Uh, just like underscore, underscore file, but it's actually the directory that the file lives in. Yeah, we, did we did anything? No, that's okay. あ、いるって感じ。あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、
I need to cons conservative, like we, we are not going to any drastic change. And uh, we all usually wait a year or so before adding some uh, brand new stuff. And, it, and we keep to keep the emerging new idea uh, only after it, it, it has proven by other more experimental language, like uh, what, what I'm saying, more smaller language. So we, as a design uh, principle, uh, we should be conservative about adding new stuff. At the same time, uh, we like to, to, we don't want to hinder the uh, motivation of the contributors. So we, uh, we are conservative, but still open for new changes. Thank you. Hi. I wanted to thank you first for such a beautiful programming language that we all get to use every day. Um, and I want to know, from your perspective, what's some of the most beautiful Ruby code that you've seen? I don't know. You are cool. <laughs> <laughs> Any hints? Yeah, beauty is uh, very subjective, so I don't define any be beautiful Ruby code. But you know, I s often see the, some kind of the I don't know beauty as a something un understandable, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's it's quite difficult to define the beauty. So we we sometimes feel beauty when uh, when we see something obfuscated. So I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> this question's kind of uh building on Corey's earlier. Uh is there anything that you wish you would have implemented or, or included in the initial uh, Ruby release that uh, in hindsight uh, you wish you would have done? Uh, like uh, better concurrency stuff like actors with removing thread stuff. That, that would be better. That w could, could have been better. Thanks. Uh, hi, I have, uh, I came here to ask a question from Japan. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Why don't you uh, introduce a uh, list comprehension syntax like Haskell or Python into Ruby? Uh, I, I think you don't like the syntax, but uh, uh, I, I'd like to ask the reason why do you, why don't you like the syntax? Uh, it's ugly and, <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> and it makes syntax complex. All right, right. Mm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so beauty is subjective, but ugliness is not. <laughs> no, no, you know, yeah. ugly is subjective too. Yeah. But for language design, my subject is uh, exactly. works best. <laughs> That's right. Um, you've brought up Go a couple of times, and you, we mostly program in Ruby, or a lot of us do all day. And you program in a systems programming language, C, mm -hmm. to build Ruby. Mm -hmm. What do you like about Go, and what things do you not like about Go? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like Go, and just because you know, the Go is not really complex like other system program, object-oriented system programming language, like uh, something started with C or something started with J. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah, I like the things mo better. Like it has some kind of the better object oriented in system programming, like uh, duct typing via interface and uh, embedding uh, other object into into the structure. And yeah, I like them. I like them. Uh, but still, and uh, the th things in Go I don't like it. Uh, uh, it's still not immature, so mm -hmm. I can wait for a little bit. And uh, I, I feel something weird about the, that, that reverse type declaration. 
like a, a variable name, uh, pointers, an integer, or something like that. It's just get reverse from C, so I could re weird. But yeah, it's rational after if I you get used to that, that kind of format of declaration. So I like it. Maybe sometimes I rewrite re the yeah, Ruby yeah. in Go. <laughs> oh, my the baddest point of Go is the name. It's I I like the name, but it's quite difficult to, to Google. <laughs> <laughs> what direction would you like to see the community go? Like where do you see us ending up in five years? Uh yeah, in after five years, I attend the Ruby conference, full teams, and uh, I want to see everyone smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so the current stable release of Ruby is 191. We're rapidly approaching 192, mm -hmm. and uh, all of the developers that I know are developing on 1.8.6 and 1.8.7. We're deploying to 1.8 series mm -hmm. Ruby. Um, when should we stop doing that? I, why are we doing that? I don't. I think I've cargo culted the version of Ruby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So we should be. So we should be deploying to one point nine point one. So now. At, at least the one nine one is very uh, the relatively stable, mm -hmm. uh, even compar comparable to one eight six or one eight five or something. So. If you don't, if you when you start the new project from scratch, you just can try one one nine one first okay. to, to see the if you, your your uh, critical level critical gems are available or not. So this is so that's really the deciding factor is whether or not mm -hmm. the libraries that you're depending on are compatible. Right, right. As a language, the one nine one is yeah the recent one nine one patch level is quite good enough. Okay. Great, so thank you. Just try it. Okay. Can you talk about the future of performance in Ruby? Uh, faster. <laughs> 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 By JRuby or Rubinius or even Yao. And uh, you know, <coughs> since JRuby is very conservative about the, the C extensions, so it's quite difficult to make it even faster than something like Rubinius. So, but we're, we're trying, and we have a lot of things we can do yet. So, like uh, adding some kind of JIT stuff by L using LLVM and other libraries, or, or, or like a libjit. We can even try uh, some kind of inlining or the tracing JIT, and we can improve the somewhat garbage collector. So, I think we, there are plenty of bloom that we can improve the performance of CRuby, so we will keep doing, uh, in keep co improving the performance. And uh, you know, the Koichi is the performance guy, so he will do anything to make it faster, and I will help. <laughs> um, as a follow-up question, so there are a lot of patches floating out there which make Ruby faster for some applications. Uh, pardon? Uh, there are a lot of patches uh, for Ruby uh, that mm -hmm. make it faster for some applications. The simplest one would be just increasing the uh, well threshold for garbage collection. Mm -hmm. um, what's, uh, is there a plan to integrate some of those, uh, possibly in some modified form, into the mainline interpreter? Yeah, we will try some of them just, just because, um, you know, the, the most famous patch is a, a, is a And Ruby Enterprise Edition patch, which is uh, work uh, copying copy on write friendly DC, and uh, which slows down the, the other environment like a like a desktop application or scripting scripting program. So we we just cannot merge in. So you know, at this unlike Ruby Enterprise Edition, so Ruby, the plain Ruby is not web centric. So we cannot merge in the, the garbage collector only works well with the uh, web application. 
So we were planning. The, the basic idea is taken. So we are planning to make it uh, work well with non-web application. But until that, we cannot merge it, the, that part again. Mm -hmm. the, Rob will be the last question, by the way. My question is, what's the difference between uh, building and designing a language versus building and designing an application? And what skills lend themselves to one or the other? Uh, it, it's quite similar. We, uh, like, uh, designing language is kind of similar to designing APIs. Like, imagine the way that is used. So, and uh, designing the syntax and the pattern of the usage and uh, provide, I imagine, the, the face of the users. Uh, it's quite similar. And, uh, but since language is used more widely, so we have, uh, language designers need to consider a little bit more things. Can I just follow up? And, and what, what are these other things that they have to consider? I mean, is it just the API, or is there more to it than just that? You know, the, when you for example, you, if when you design some database API, you need to consider the, the accessing data. But when designing a language, the, the language might be used in web application, might be used in a scripting program, or even on the the programs for supercomputers. So we have to consider about the, the various situation which, which that the language would be used. Um, so I've also been kind of intrigued by Go lately. Go. And you, know, you brought it up in your keynote. Um, can you, well particularly Go routines and channels um, and its support for con concurrency. Um, could you talk a little bit about plans for that type of current concurrency support in future versions of Ruby? Uh, you know, the, the concurrency support for Ruby is right now is threads, and uh, which is quite difficult to, to control. You know, you have non-determinist behavior, and it, so the some kind of like a like actors are much better in, in the, the, the aspect of designing the, the concurrency application. So, so in the future plan, we provide some kind of the, the more abstract concurrency feature and on top of threads or multiple VM or fibers so, so that the, the, the ordinary programmer does not need, need to touch the very lower level like threads. So keeping the concurrency abstract is our yeah, future goal. Great, thank you. Hey Mance, a couple of years ago when we hit 1.9, it used to be that the one point odd was a development release and the one point even was the stable production release. Yeah, I saw you, that. You weren't ready to go to two, so you went to 1.9. So in five years, are we going to be at like 1.9.9 point, point something? Or when will we be ready to make Ruby, Ruby 2.0? Oh, uh, well, first of all, I, when 1.9.0 came in, so I changed the, the version scheme, which is the one, one point something dot zero should be the development version, and the one point for example, 1.9.1 is, is a stable version. So I changed the, the version scheme. So 192 is not development or unstable version. So, and uh, so that we will have the 200 that would be a development version. And uh, if when, I, when we have 201, that should be the, the stable version of the 200 series. It's, it's okay. And that will be when or, ba or okay. conditioned on, on <laughs> what? That, that's an important question. And uh, right after we release the 192, I will start the working on Ruby 2.0. So that, that's an 
I will promise that. And I, I would not promise when it's to be released. No, no we, uh, it, it is one of the conditions of, or one of the limitations you felt going from one eight, one nine to two is, are there things that you expect to not be backward compatible between Ruby two and one eight or one nine? Uh, one nine would be introduced somewhat incompatibility. Yeah, right. So that, that's why we put up the Ruby two role. But that, that incompatibility would not be b b big, as big as the gap between the one eight and one nine, much smaller. Thank you. All right. Um, I would like us all to give a round of applause to Max.